Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India and welcome to lecture 5 of the course titled introduction to interaction design. So, in the last two lectures we discussed how to understand the users because users are one of the most important aspect when we are inter designing interactions. So, uh, we just touched upon the area of understanding users and we will be looking at them in the future uh, courses as well a little bit more in depth. We also uh, studied the process of interaction design where we saw a few methods like double diamond and other methods which help in identifying the problem and also to come up with better solutions. So, today we will be talking about conceptual uh, design and how and why uh, conceptualizing interactions is important. So, there are broadly two reasons why we need to conceptualize interaction. So, one is that to find out what is the benefit of the proposed uh, product and how feasible is it. So, is it solving some problem of the users? Is it going to add some value or will it be desirable for a larger number of people? The second uh, reason is that it provides and enables the designers with building blocks with the help of which they can create better interactions. So, for example, for user experience study, the, the designer will be able to communicate that what would the users require. So, what are those uh, the steps and points that the users will require and that will help them create a better interactive platform. So, this is also uh, referred to as a proof of concept where we are checking that how uh, would it fit into the current system and whether it has some value or not. So, let us take an example wherein we need to develop a concept for an application for a city bus service in a metropolitan city. So, some of the questions that would be asked or would come to mind are that why do we need this, what problems would this address and uh, so on. But if we categorize this uh, particular need in a statement as a problem uh, statement, so we probably would put it together as uh, passengers often face inconvenience due to the lack of reliable system to monitor buses and their routes which can leave them waiting at stops without any knowledge of their availability, timelines or alternate options to reach these intended uh, destinations. So, you can notice that how from uh, uh, you know giving a requirement with very wide uh, scope how we are touching the points which are relevant for the users and this will help us come up with a, a better solution. So, once we have put our problem in a problem statement which is neither too generalized and nor too restrictive, then we will come to the next part which is the research questions. So, research questions give direction to the work, they help us organize our work uh, uh, properly and also they help us form the objectives later on. So, for the problem that we discussed, the statement that we created, for that problem some of the research questions could be what are the demographics of the target users in terms of age, occupation, income level. How can the city bus app integrate with other transportation modes like metro, bike sharing or popular navigation apps? and similar other questions. So, you can notice here that how the questions are more relevant as compared to when we were 
having a very broad uh, statement of creating an app city bus. So, when we begin a design project, we have to be clear about two things. First is uh, assumption. Assumption is basically a problem or need that we are assuming exists. It is not, there is no proof that it exists, neither there is any data to back it up, but we are just making an assumption that there is a need for this problem or this particular solution. Similarly, claim on the other hand has a data backed proof which tells whether or not a certain uh, act, certain act is happening or certain need is there. So, these uh, uh, both are very important to note uh, down or write down, because then we will try to defend or support them and they can highlight whether the need is vague or whether it really exists. And also if we have any poorly constructed problem statement or requirement. So, we can also uh, work on it and make it more uh, practical. So, let us take an example of assumption which says that users prefer mobile shopping apps over desktop websites for making online purchases. So, there is no uh, data or proof which is assuming this particular statement, but there is a claim which says that implementing personalized product recommendations increases customer engagement and conversion rates in e-commerce. So, uh, probably uh, some tracking has been done which tells us that how if there are some personal recommendations, customers will uh, you know they see a larger volume of customers and the business improvement is there. So, now here we can form questions, research questions such that how do users perceive and interact with mobile shopping apps compared to desktop websites or how or what are the benefits and drawbacks of personalized product recommendations in e-commerce. So, you see that we are able to uh, now explore the assumptions and uh, the claim as well. So, the research questions will help us uh, check whether that assumption is true or not. And, uh, depending on the problem uh, that we are trying to explore, we can then uh, take this uh, forward. So, the research questions will help us create our objectives and then we can find ways or methodologies how to explore them further. So, now questions like are there problems with an existing <coughs> product or user experience? If so, what are they? So, when the team is interacting with the users and these kinds of claims and assumptions are discussed. So, the, the perspective uh, that we receive, it helps us take the work forward or why do you think there are problems? So, the uh, user will uh, respond to these and uh, so, uh, we will come to know whether it is a good idea or not and whether it should be implemented or taken forward or not. Now, Coming to conceptual uh, models, so some software developers when they started uh, developing applications, so they the first step was implementation of the functionality. So, they define the applications architecture wherein the platform functional modules and communication protocols, they are all uh, prepared and then they begin implementing these the modules protocols and the plat onto the platform and only once the functionality part is complete, then they uh, see that how will the user use this particular application. So, this was predominantly the style in which um, software developers used to work uh, a few decades ago and the functionality was first and they applied the interaction later on and they thought that the user will adapt to it. But these uh, you know software applications were even very difficult for these engineers and scientists to work on because they are very complex, they were not user friendly and they were not efficient and there was um, a lot of time and energy went in understanding that how it 
even works but later on in 1980s and later on when you know software application platform opened for more people not just limited to the scientists and engineers so now more exploration started happening because the user came into the focus and user became the important person who would be exploring so the system was uh, modified and few uh, of these uh, developers uh, software developers they uh, know that functionality first and then ui approach uh, user interface approach doesn't really work well and uh, so they rejected that approach and they started to begin uh, designing applications by focusing on how people will use it first and then working on the other technical aspects so conceptual uh, models and conceptual uh, design uh, these two should not be confused because sometimes people associate them with concept design or design concept so design concept and concept design these terms are for early brainstorming phase where quick prototypes are prepared where quick ideas are generated on the storyboard and this uh, process inspires innovation and generally out of the box solutions are applied here but this is not uh, what we mean by conceptual uh, design or conceptual model so uh, we'll probably get a little bit more clarity so here we can see that how the conceptual uh, design fits into the user task center design process now uh, we can see it's a cyclical uh, process we can see how it is going around in a circle and uh, maybe starting here from understanding the user needs going to conceptual design ui design and then the uh, initial uh, evaluation so you can see how the ui has been integrated early on in the newer model and then review implementation and uh, evaluation so all of these steps hold a lot of importance when it comes to the conceptual design because implementation will ensure that the the platform is uh, user friendly and it is robust uh, and reliable the uh, ui design will ensure that uh, user is having a positive experience the release is also important because the time of uh, release of this application uh, how time bound is it uh, so all those points will be important and once we release an application is in use then support becomes important because support is uh, directly uh, involved with the uh, users and user needs so again the uh, uh, support will inform that what are some of the gaps still uh, remaining in understanding the user needs and then they are incorporated and again this cycle uh, starts so you can also see some arrows are here some are dub double head uh, arrows some are single headed arrows and they are informing that how the conceptual model is integrating the information at a later stage as well it is not as if the conceptual model once it is ready it is uh, uh, set in stone it can still uh, be changed even after the release of the application because there might be some lacuna there might be some other things that were overlooked and then uh, then this uh, depending on what was overlooked so the the arrows indicate that how it is a fluid process it is not a linear process so uh, some of uh, the important requirements of the um, conceptual model is that it needs to be simple so uh, it should be as simple as possible and less is more is uh, basically the important keyword here now let's take an example that uh, for example uh, we have to create a to do list that application needs to be uh, designed so after doing the user study we come to know that users like would like to prioritize their needs uh, in a hierarchy of two most important and uh, less important for example but now if the designer uh, adds more such hierarchies into it so that will make the uh, application more complex than what the user was earlier expecting he 
the the broad majority wanted only two hierarchies but now there are more than that so they will create some confusion the other one is the task uh, focused uh, requirement that models should map as directly to the target task domain as possible so for example we have a, a book and we need to uh, xerox one page on two pages same page on two pages of uh, a4 sheet so what would be the steps in achieving that so we will uh, first put it on the uh, machine uh, take out prints if we need 50 prints we will take all odd side then we will probably remove the whole bundle uh, turn it around and then print on the even even side so there are machines uh, which are more automated which can probably do this task automatically but the previous example that we saw that provides the gulf of execution for the user which is that a task that a user wanted to accomplish now he is not able to accomplish because there, there is there are so many challenges what if the page is not in the right direction what if the print comes upside down so there are many uh, hurdles or thought processes that will be involved and will deter him from reaching his uh, final goal uh, you know uh, as quickly as possible so the um, the conceptual model that we design so it has to be tested with the users or other task domain experts so before we work further on it so such testing may uh, inform us the conceptual holes so these conceptual holes are certain problems that may be there certain gaps but they can be uh, filled up and uh, uh, the revised model can be then returned for uh, assessing the user needs again now sometimes what happens is that once the conceptual model is used for creating the user interface the designers abandon the conceptual model but that is not a very good practice the reason being that even after the uh, for example an application has been released uh, user testing results later also can be incorporated in the ui but once all of that has happened the feedback has been taken but but the application will lack a very solid conceptual uh, ground so that will be missing because we have not updated our conceptual model so it is although a difficult task to uh, rework on the conceptual model because it takes time the team may get exhausted but it is important that the conceptual model is uh, refined as per the feedback that we are receiving and what is important to uh, remember is that the conceptual model is is the primary uh, uh, of of primary importance so it should uh, not be neglected and one should not just uh, uh, you know rush to make the create the architecture of the application for example so in the uh, last uh, lecture uh, uh, in the third lecture we had seen some of the processes of design we where we also saw the agile process and uh, this is just breaking down the uh, whole system so that we can see it in three phases wherein the inception phase you can see that once the problem starts the user profiles are created and again it is like a cyclical manner where we are working on it the dotted lines they show how the information is going back uh, in the loop and then when once that uh, has uh, uh, we have achieved the optimum level we go on to the task analysis where we identify the essential use cases and again you can see the dotted arrow is taking it back and then we move on to the conceptual model so once this uh, knowledge base we have which is of the user uh, and the task so now we can create our conceptual model wherein we employ paper uh, uh, you know prototypes so we can still uh, explore many options to create a conceptual model once we are satisfied then we move on to the high level storyboard user uh, interface or the high fidelity prototypes we will talk about these also in upcoming uh, lectures and uh, 
uh, of course then the, um, the the style guide is created and then the detailed user interface design is worked upon which again we can see cycle 1 to cycle n which means that they they may be it's expected that there will be more than one of these cycles so uh, this is uh, a good example to see how we can arrange our uh, project how can we break it up into these simpler phases and then uh, find solutions so a, a very good example uh, of conceptual uh, model is the star interface which was developed in 1981 by xerox and uh, this has helped change the uh, way uh, the interfaces were designed and now it is also in use uh, you can see glimpses of this in mac and even in windows so it was originally designed as an office system for workers who were not interested in computing and it was based on the conceptual model that included the familiar knowledge of an office so here the con the conceptual model that it took was since our you know employees are not interested in computing but still we have to communicate information to, to them because some paper needs to be moved some mail has to uh, move around the office so taking uh, actual products like a file or a, a, a dustbin or a, a mail symbol of a mail the email uh, post mail so using those as you know identifiable icons now the so now the uh, users knew that if this is a file folder so the file has to move to be moved into a file folder of course it is not moving physically but still on the screen that movement shows that it has moved from one location to the other so uh, this is one uh, example of how uh, we create these conceptual models and depending on the situation and the problem we can derive inspiration from many sources and we will be looking at uh, this in the future uh, lectures uh, as well. So, uh, this is all for today's uh, lecture, uh, thank you and see you.